everyone. Welcome to our community vigil tonight. Um, please note the chalked X's on the ground. That is the social distancing guidance um, for you all. So if you are not potting together, please stay on an X. Um, it looks like everyone's doing a pretty good job with their masks. If anyone does need masks, we actually do have extras here. Um, so yes, we have um, a few peacekeepers around. Um, and they're in orange vests. Um, yeah, let's get started. I'm just gonna assess for any language needs. Um, 这里有没有人要普通话的翻译呢? 普通话的翻译有没有? Okay. 这里有没有人要普通话的翻译呢? 广东话? Okay, we will keep in English then. Um, hi everyone, my name is Hang Ho. I am a Just Us Somerville member um, and one of the organizers of this event. I would like to also introduce, hi, um, I would also like to introduce, I'd also like to introduce the fellow organizers who are making this possible. So here we have Nelson, we have Wade, we have Tracy back here, we have Nicole over there. Vietnam as refugees after the war um, and you know actually before this I dropped by my mom's house to pick up some food that she made for me um, and you know she made some of my childhood favorites like you know, and watercress soup but I actually didn't even tell her I was organizing this tonight um, because I know that if I were to tell her I'm organizing this anti-Asian violence vigil and I was going to speak up here in public that she would really worry about me um, and you know she would insist that I stay home, which is something she's been doing a lot more of ever since the Atlanta shootings. And meanwhile, I've been worried about her, knowing about all the, all the attacks on elders across this country ever since the start of this pandemic. We really appreciate your presence here tonight to come together as a community to stand up against anti-Asian violence. Somerville is home to so many Asians from all over. We have neighbors and friends from South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, you know, Central Asia, the Pacific Islands. Um, and the thing is that the history of Asians in the United States have always included exclusion, marginalization, violence, and exploitation. We are here to acknowledge that history and to mourn the lives hurt and lost to anti-Asian violence. We are here to say that white supremacy and racism do not belong here. It's my honor to um, introduce one of the original founders of Just Us Somerville um, to speak about our mission and our vision for creating a safer and more inclusive Somerville. Tracy Leah Pratt, everyone. Hello, everybody. So first of all, when I say who are we, I want you to say Just Us Somerville. Who are we? Just Us Somerville. Who are we? Just Us Somerville. Who are we? Just Us Somerville. Absolutely. Now, first of all, I am Tracy Leah Pratt. I'm one of the founding members. I'm a teacher in a nearby school district down that way, but it's not about me or any individual on the stage. It's about us collectively as a community. And that is, even though a vigil, we're getting together for a sad occasion. We want to acknowledge something terrible that happened but the one thing that we should celebrate is that we are a community and we are coming together as a community. <laughs> Just a Somerville. Our mission is pretty simple. It's to give voice to people of color who do not have a voice in this city. It can be black people, it can be 
what African American, African descended, Hispanic, Asian, and Asians encompass many, many, many different people. You cannot put the Asian continent just like you cannot put the African continent into a box. And you will be learning a little bit more about that this evening. So um, I'm going to read through not all, but some of our demands. I'm going to be lifting up. And if you want to know more about our demands, if you want to know more about Just Us Somerville, if you want to unite with us, particularly people of color, we need you. Please go to our Facebook page, which is Just Us Somerville. If you put it in, we'll pop up. It has a little green J. Um, and please join forces with us because we need you. So some of the things that we are demanding, we want to end a co-opting of all voices of people of color and our narratives. We don't need other people to speak for us. We can speak for ourselves. We need desperately for this city to hire people of color in full-time positions throughout the school and throughout the city. We need our city boards and commissions to reflect the diversity of our community. We need to stop gentrification that drives people of color and their businesses out of our city. Look around, we know what's happening right here. We need to create a civilian oversight and review co and committee that's com composed of a diverse group of city residents. That is something we need. And I want to say, as a group, we are not a defund the police group, but we're looking for the community and the police to work together and support each other. We want to end punitive practices that disproportionately impact low-income black and brown children in our schools. And we also want our children to feel comfortable in school. We need to get rid of these steps and cadet programs that are making children feel uncomfortable. And one of the biggest, biggest ones for this evening, we need in Somerville a system for tracking and transparency of hate crimes and public safety in the, in the community. Currently, we don't have a system for tracking hate crimes, and we need that desperately with what's happening now in our city and in our country. So, I am going to bring the next person to the stage, and before I do that, I want to just say a word to our allies. Allies, I always want to thank you for being part of us and for coming, but I want you to think about taking a step further. There's a difference between being an ally and being anti-racist. So think about that, think about what that means, look it up, I'll be happy to talk to you about it and what are the biggest key differences between allyship and anti-racism. After the event this evening, any people of color who do want to join us, please, Stand back and find one of us. We all have name tags on so we can tell you more about how you can join with us again. And um, that's it. I'll just stop there because I lost my train of thought. But, <laughs> okay. Um, next, I am bringing to the stage Erica Eierhoven. She is a state representative for the 27th Middle Step. Middlesex District, which covers most of Somerville. So please welcome her, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Erica Eiderhoven.
I'm here to speak today about what happened. This is painful. It is painful because anti-Asian racism renders us invisible. What invisible means is that our humanity, our lived experience, our pain, our ambitions to be whole citizens of this country is not even acknowledged. It took the brutal murder and hate crime of unspeakable magnitude for white America to pause and begin to see anti-Asian hate and anti-Asian racism. It took a massacre for my neighbors, movement siblings, community members to see something I carry with me my whole life. We all carry with us our whole lives. My earliest memory growing up in the United States was playing outside of Red Barn, my preschool. I saw my mom's white Buick pull up. I was so excited to see her. And I ran over to hug her when a boy screamed loudly at my mom, imitating and mocking her accent, and pulled back the sides of his face to make fun of her eyes. I actually don't remember this part, but my mom told me recently that in that moment at four years old, when we got back into the car, I consoled her and told her it's gonna be okay. From a young age, we are taught that to survive white supremacy, you assimilate. You assimilate in school, you work hard, you don't speak up, fit the disgustingly narrow mold, laugh it off and smile when someone says, it's not fair, you're only good at math because you're Asian. Ignore it when a classmate tells you their grandparents don't want you to, at their house because you're Japanese. You work hard and hope that the next generation won't have to deal with this, only to realize that our youth and our elders are getting attacked for spreading the China virus. 3,800 incidents of hate crimes reported last year, twice as many incidents reported by women than men. And we know that this is a gross underreporting. The passage of time, hopeful thinking, and assimilation will never make the only country some of us call home somewhere we feel safe. After eight people were brutally murdered, the Sheriff's Department stated the murder was not racially motivated and that the mass murderer had said, quote, had a really bad day. This is the epitome of your life and your humanity being rendered invisible. I want to be clear, this isn't a faraway problem. I'm done with white people parroting lazy narratives that this racism happened in the South, that this isn't a problem in the North, or that Somerville is progressive and we're not like the rest of Massachusetts. Yes. Somerville has racism. Racism is here in Somerville. It is not by happenstance that I am the first woman of color elected to any office in Somerville in over a quarter of a century. Look at every BIPOC person who has run for office in Somerville. It is not a question of if they face racism, but a question of when they face racism. And that is just the tip of the iceberg of our community's daily lived experience. Because white supremacy renders our humanity invisible, people don't know our stories. And when we share our stories, our lives, our experiences, they are viewed with suspicion. This is what happened to me when I ran for office last year. It's one thing to assimilate within a mold palatable to the white gaze, but an Asian woman's political ambition is a massive threat. I cannot tell you how many times white people questioned my background, my story, my mom's story, 
To this day, I am regularly accused of fabricating my own lived experience. I ask myself every day, am I doing enough to dismantle and disrupt white supremacy and make our stories heard? I ruminate over every time I took a step back, that I downplay the racism I faced, that I laughed off a horrible and deeply personal thing someone said to me. I'm constantly thinking, should I speak out? Should I push back? Or do I just smile and keep working hard? Or maybe I'll say something, but proceed with extreme caution. Today is the most I've spoken publicly about the racism I faced during the time I ran for office. And yet I have been falsely accused in the print, in print, in several papers of using the quote race card. I have been accused of not identifying as a person of color until I ran for office, until it was politically expedient. I was accused of calling my opponent racist. It's almost as though merely the way I look puts those words in people's mouths. Running for public office as a woman of color is a massive minefield of damned if you do, damned if you don't. To speak out and challenge white supremacy and how we each individually uphold it is to stand in my personal and anti-racist socialist values. And yet, to do so threatens our shiny image of Somerville as a progressive beacon and brings with it backlash. To share my story, yes, I am from here. I was born here. My mother immigrated to the US and she worked as a housemaid for a family in Brookline. Yes, she gave everything for me to go to college and pursue my dreams. Yes, I'm a Nisei, a proud second generation Japanese immigrant. I grew up speaking Japanese and learned English in public school. I love my handwriting in Japanese I still feel small joys of feeling cool when I write notes in Japanese to my mom, but I always struggled with remembering my kanji. Struggling with feeling not Japanese enough, growing up biracial, is my story and my identity. I graduated from Japanese language school of Boston, which is just across the city line in Medford, and I can't wait to send my kids there someday. Yes, Massachusetts is my home. I will fight tooth and nail for a state house that embodies a healthy democracy that is transparent, accountable to its people, and accessible to all. And yes, I have lived here long enough to represent our community. I belong here. Asian Americans belong here. BIPOC people belong here, and this is our community. This is our story. I have an ask from each of you here with us today. Please take an hour of your time, two if you can spare it. Spend that time reading and learning the stories of these six beautiful, kind, and ambitious souls who were murdered in Atlanta on March 16th. By learning their stories, we are one step closer to acknowledging their humanity as they always deserved. Learn about Hyun Jung Kim, a proud single mother of two sons. She dedicated her life to provide for her family. Now that she is gone, her oldest son needs to take care of his brother because the rest of their family is in South Korea. Learn about To Yunfeng. She immigrated here from China. Her entire family is in China and cannot come to Georgia to bury her. When I think of her, I think of my mom when she was alone here for over a decade here in the US, thousands, had fa family thousands of miles away. Learn about Sun Cha Kim. Her granddaughter, Regina, said that she represented everything I wanted to be as a woman. She never forgot to call me once a week to say, stay strong in life. When you're happy, I'm happy. When I think of her, I think of my grandma who loved me and believed in me unconditionally. 
So please think of them, their family, their friends, and community here in the U.S. and abroad. Say their names. Learn their stories. Learn our history and our story. Thank you. Nicole Ibrett, an organizer with Asian American Resource Workshop, the Community Action Agency of Somerville, and a Just Us member, and a wonderful, wonderful organizer. Welcome, Nicole. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Nicole Eichbrett and I am a Chinese transracial and transnational adoptee. Transracial is a term used by people who are used for people who are born in one race or culture, but then through adoption were raised in another. And for me, that was a white family and community. Adoptees like myself are first generation immigrants whose roots were severed from our birth families culture and homeland. This is trauma that many adoptees carry their entire lives and compounded with white supremacy can manifest itself as isolation and mental illness. Adoptees are four times more likely than non-adopted people to commit suicide. So first, I stand here today in my grief and rage for the lost life of Christian Hall a fellow Chinese adoptee in Philadelphia who was shot and murdered by a Pennsylvania state trooper during his mental health crisis this past December. Standing here now, I feel proud to be Chinese and I feel proud to be Asian American, but getting to that place was not easy. I had to find my own pride and my own identity in my own community. And I had to do so in the face of a society that bombards Asian Americans with individual acts of racism, just like Erica just shared. Like being told that we don't belong here, that our eyes are too small, that our names are too hard to pronounce, or that our food smells weird. It's being seen and treated as objects for sexual pleasure, or to be only respected when we are the compliant model minority. White supremacy dehumanizes and reduces us. It says we are not human enough to merit safety or even life, life itself. And this year, far too many souls have been lost due to racist anti-Asian violence. But this racism is also not new. And that's because white supremacy isn't just individual acts of racism, it's the systems and the culture that we are all part of, starting centuries ago on the stolen land with the genocidal destination of First Nations people and the chattel slavery of our black siblings to the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1888 and everything else leading up to today. <laughs> White supremacy then and now is the denial of humanity for people of color. Not only in what we feel and how we are perceived, but what we have materially. White supremacy is the denial of opportunity when undocumented immigration status or the inability to speak English is the reason why you are underemployed in poverty paying jobs and can't afford stable housing. White supremacy is the denial of dignity when your family fled genocide in Cambodia or US imperialism in Vietnam to escape violence, but your community here in the US is under-resourced in constant fear of deportation and facing rapid displacement from gentrification. White supremacy is the denial of safety, as you all know, of walking out your door and having to fear assault from your neighbors, a fear that's even greater when you're elderly, female, or queer. It's when you're Muslim or South Asian and face hyper surveillance for having brown skin or for adoptees or anyone else who might be feeling suicidal and need help, but you risk being harmed or even killed by the state. 
and white supremacy is the denial of being fully seen as human beings who have the right to all of these things and more, including the right to live out our full humanity and not constantly in fear in our cycles of trauma. But because white supremacy is the systemic denial of our humanity, we can't expect it to end one piece at a time. Just like these acts of anti-Asian violence can't be viewed in isolation, neither can our answers. Individualized solutions like more policing, more hate crime prosecution, electing that one key politician will never fix this problem on its own. change in our solutions have to be collective. It has to address the underlying systemic issues as they are interconnected. We need to shift our values of, as individuals, but also as a community. We need to transform what safety, opportunity, dignity, and humanity looks like for everyone. Where housing, healthcare, education, opportunity, and safety are all human, are all treated as human rights and come from a place of love, abundance, and solidarity. And this is why we need to be building movements, intersectional movements. And this is why I am an organizer. Here in the greater Boston area and across Massachusetts and across the United States, Asian American organizers have been leading movements for community safety and solidarity um, for decades now, and largely out of necessity. White supremacy did not let the system, the system of white supremacy did not defeat us, but it won't be dismantled without your help. To those of you who are engaging with the Asian and Asian American community for the first time tonight, because this anti-Asian violence is suddenly more visible, I welcome your allyship, and just like Tracy said, I'm ready for you to be an anti-racist accomplice a lot at our side. But I hope this won't be your one-off action. I hope this won't be the box that you check so you feel absolved of your responsibility to do anything else. I hope you each carry forward an understanding of how all of this is interconnected and inter intersectional. And I hope that this is the time that you start fighting with us to change this system of white supremacy because we, people of color, are enraged and most acutely exhausted. So while I am so grateful to be in community with all of you tonight, and my God, do I love being a Somerville resident and the neighbor to all of you, I don't want to be here tonight for these reasons. And I don't want to constantly exist in my individual and my community's grief, pain, and fear. That is not living. That is not thriving. And to my Asian and AAPI friends and neighbors, I see you, I love you, and I'm with you. So lastly, what I'll share is that if you are not using your power and privilege to dismantle white supremacy wherever it exists, then you are complicit in upholding the system. I'm calling on each of you to push on this wall with us with people of color, Asian, Asian American, and all black, brown, and indigenous people. We need your unflinching courage and urgency to fight back at a system that is killing us. And we need your solidarity and for you to show up so that we can all live and thrive in our full humanity because none of us deserves anything less. Thank you. Jr., who is a Just Us member and current candidate running for Somerville City Council at large. Wow. 
thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Erica, both for sharing your experiences with us tonight. They were extremely powerful. And I know so many people are going to take them away um, and live with them for a long time. So thank you. And thank you to everyone that's come out tonight to take a step towards ending our ongoing national tragedy of white supremacist violence. As Nicole said, my name is Willie Burnley Jr. And I join you tonight as a neighbor, as a member of Just Us Somerville, and as a co-conspirator in our collective struggle to end and eradicate the virus known as racial hatred. Like so many people here tonight, I am in a, an inheritor of a liberatory history. A history of struggle and survival. A history of freedom fighters. A history pained and played by imperialist violence that still points us to the path of peace. A core tenet of that history is that all of our freedoms, all of our safeties are tied together. So tonight I am meeting you in the spirit of that truth. This surge, this surging wave of anti-Asian violence is not new. It was born of ideas that date back to at least over a hundred years ago when the term yellow peril was used by Europeans to justify the conquering and colonization of China. The tropes that they used then are the same tropes we heard here tonight. The idea that Asians are inherently foreign or inhuman. The idea that they carry diseases or are hypersexual or intrinsically violent or dangerous or cunning and need to be afraid of. All of these are excuses to justify what Martin Luther King Jr. called the three evils. Racism, militarism, and materialism. These ideas lived on here in the Chinese Exclusion Act, in Japanese internment, in everything from the microaggressions of where are you really from to the, micro, the macroaggressions of vigilante and police violence. <laughs> Yet for too many of us, this history has been invisibilized by the model minority myth, which itself is an idea steeped in anti-black racism. I know that there's a better way to live out our ancestors' dream of safety through solidarity, of everything that Nicole spoke about tonight. I've seen it between the black and Asian communities before. During the 60s, when the black power movement was under attack, and the model minority myth threatened to divide our colonized people from each other, members of the API community rallied he came together and held signs that read, Yellow Peril supports black power. It means the world to me to see that. In that time, there were people like Yuri Kochiyama, who herself was interned in America, and friends of Malcolm X, and revolutionary organizers like Grace Lee Boggs, that made black and Asian solidarity a core part of their work. Today, in our time, there is only us. As a black man whose life has been incalculably nourished by the support and care of Asian Americans, I wanna say that I will always have your back. I wanna say that our histories of shared struggle would not be erased because I won't let it and I hope you won't either. I won't be a bystander when anti-Asian racism rears its head. 
I will step in. I will get somebody. I will do whatever it takes to make sure that we are safe. I will mourn with you. I will march with you. And together, we can make a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Willie, Nicole, Erica, and Tracy. Um, let's all have our candles ready to just hold six minutes of silence together, honoring all victims of anti-Asian violence throughout history and in more recent events, including the six Asian women who were killed in the Atlanta shootings, and also all the elders who've been needlessly attacked throughout the country. Um, and I'd like to invite any community member who identifies as Asian, if they'd want to be surrounded by other Asians or other Asian Americans, please feel free to step up here in this area up here.
for your presence, everyone. Um, Just Us members uh, will be hanging out until about 8 o'clock, so if you'd like to come build community with us, especially for community members of color who'd like to know more about how to join us, please feel free to stick around, hang out and talk to us. Thank you everyone for being in community with us. <laughs>